In this module, I want to take a look at motion on an inclined plane. This is worth taking a moment to consider because we end up working with a lot of inclined planes in this course just because it provides a uh, sandbox in which to look at a whole bunch of different types of problems, but they bring their own particular flavor to physics exercises. And the incline makes an angle theta with respect to the ground. The wedge itself forms a right triangle and so I know that this angle theta plus this other angle phi is also equal to 90 degrees. And so we've been studying one-dimensional constant acceleration motion, and so let's ask the question whether this is a one-dimensional problem. I mean, if I graph here my positive x and positive y axes relative to the uh, uh, gravity, the motion seems to be going in two dimensions. But the answer is, this is a one-dimensional problem, if we choose the right coordinate system. And the right coordinate system is not, in fact, this one. The right coordinate system should be along the angle of the incline. And so this is sort of the first lesson of motion on an incline plane. If motion is constrained in some way, and here it is, this incline constrains the motion of this particle to be along this slope. So if the motion is constrained to move on a line, choose the axis along that line. There may be exceptions, but this is certainly the right way to start. How you put your coordinate systems is a choice. If you do all the physics correctly, you will still get the right answer by choosing this coordinate system. However, all coordinate systems are not created equal when it comes to the simplicity in which you can solve the problem. In motion of an inclined plane, what is the acceleration of that object? The acceleration, which is a vector, has a magnitude and a direction. And the magnitude of the acceleration is the projection of the free fall acceleration along line of the incline. Now I know that's a bit cumbersome, but I wanted to get exactly what we mean in words instead of just putting some symbol or some equation, because it's the words that are important, and the mathematical representation might be different depending on the example that we're using. The direction in this case is much simpler, and that's down the incline. Let's calculate the magnitude. This is now a coordinate system that's parallel and perpendicular to the ground. So this is the vector for the acceleration free fall. Its magnitude is g, and it's pointing in this direction. Now I'm going to draw another coordinate system that's parallel and perpendicular along the line of my incline. And so this set of axes is parallel and perpendicular to incline. The next thing to do is to be able to relate these angles this angle right here is the angle between the ground and the horizontal. It's the angle between the line parallel to the ground and the line parallel to the incline. My yellow and blue axes are all perpendicular to each other. If this is theta, that means this is theta, which means this is theta and this is theta. Because the blue is a right angle, that means theta and this angle have to be 90 degrees. Well, we know what angle added to theta gives us 90 degrees, and that's phi. This angle, so this angle is phi, this angle is phi, and this angle is phi. To do a projection, I start at the tip of the acceleration vector and draw a line that's perpendicular to the line on which I want the projection. The projection is simply the length from the tail of the vector to where the line meets. So now I need to calculate what that is. The length of that vector, which corresponds to the magnitude, is g. I know that this angle right here is phi. Using trigonometry, I know that this projection, which I'll call a, is equal to the magnitude of the free fall acceleration g times cosine phi. 
if I look at this right triangle, I know that this angle is phi. I know that this angle has to be theta. And how do I know that? Because of this red triangle is a right triangle. And so these two angles have to equal 90. So this angle is theta. That length is also equal to g sine theta. A lot of books, when they're dealing with this, will have an equation somewhere in the text that has a is equal to g sine theta. And the problem with that is, depending on what angles you have, that may or may not be right. If I have this triangle, and this angle happens to be 30 degrees, and I'm given that, then I'd want to know, okay, a is equal to g sine 30 degrees. What if I'm given this angle, and what if that angle is called theta? If all I have is this equation, and I plug this angle in for theta, I'm going to get the wrong answer. So in this case, if I use this angle, I need to use this expression here. Or I can use this angle to calculate what this angle is, and use g sine theta. g cosine theta or g sine theta. If I look as theta goes to zero, this goes to g, and this goes to zero. So I know that the answer has to be this. Is it sine or is it cosine? Look at the limiting case and see whether it leads you to the right answer.